that. When, when you had this idea to make Counter Strike or you know to create the mod, uh, how'd you go about doing that? Like, when did you decide to actually uh, create what you did? So <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, at the time, uh, I was just I was a big player. Uh, I was a big uh, like. Uh, uh, I, I was part of a clan that used to play a lot of like Quake uh, mm -hmm. deathmatch, and what was the clan? Do you remember? I, I forgot the name. It's crazy. We're yeah. we're getting so old that we God. forget what clans we were in. Yeah, no, uh, it was never a big clan. You know, we never really took off. And it, but uh, it was we were pretty skilled at the time. I mean, I remember whenever we played on public scrims, we would be like top. We would always be in the top five of mm -hmm. of. Of, of 30 players, because I mean back then I think it was like uh, 16 players, so 16 mm -hmm. on 16, or or was it uh, 8 on 8? But anyways, mm -hmm. we would always be in the top five, so we were a pretty good clan. But uh, one of the th problems I had with the Quick Deathmatch was it was just uh, there was no t uh, teamwork. You know, it was really just kind of singular, kind of like individual skill. Yeah, about having your route and mm -hmm. running it. Yeah, exactly. Then, yeah, there and wasn't there yeah. wasn't a whole lot of communication back then. We didn't have Discord or anything. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> So that's kind of my impetus for making Counter Strike was I wanted uh, a, a game that would kind of encourage uh, game uh, like uh, teamwork and and just have have players kind of work together a bit more. So uh, I was I was hoping Counter Strike would be that, and you know, thankfully it it kind of it did become I, that. I think it's becoming in a really big way because you look at uh, what's going on with CS:GO now mm -hmm. and these mm -hmm. massive tournaments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you, and even but, like uh, the Rainbow Six Siege as well has, has yeah. really emulated uh, the success of CSGO uh -huh. and kind of put their own spin on it. But I think it's yeah. the drama of these games and mm -hmm. the, the loop of the games that make it so compelling on a, on a service like Twitch yeah. to watch. Yeah. Uh, there's other FPSs out there. Yeah, yeah like COD and Battlefield. But yeah, CSGO, I, I think Counter-Strike, the formula for Counter-Strike is really am amenable to, to eSports and, and to just Twitch view viewership because it, it really is a, a pretty simple uh, gameplay mechanic, and um, the levels are, are, are actually designed really well in that they're just so balanced, and they and they really um, they kind of allow the the, the, the flow of the, the players to to kind of just yeah move about in a much more yeah. I, I really think uh, it's 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 so important for a viewership standpoint, like on on esports uh, viewpoint, mm -hmm. that you can have never played the game yeah. and sit there and watch it and within a few minutes understand what's going on. Yeah. And I think that's true of, of Counter-Strike. Yeah, because it's so simple. It's just guns, shooting, and planting the bomb. There's, there's not a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, when, when I watch Overwatch, you know, as a new player, I've never played Overwatch and I watch and I'm like, what is going on here, right? So it, it, there's a bit of a learning curve, but with Counter-Strike, it is simple and it's pure in that sense. And I think a lot of players kind of gravitate towards that. and. And I think that's kind of why it's kind of remained pretty popular even to even 20 years on to th like today's standards. Right? Uh, what do you think of like the esports scene in general nowadays? Are you are you a fan? Do you do you watch a lot of competitive gameplay? Uh, I watch it casually. I mean, I don't keep up with it uh, too much. It's uh, it's very uh, uh, it, there's so much going on with it. But it's definitely uh, it, it's very compelling for me to when I watch a lot of the CSGO tournaments and I see how how good some of these players are and uh, how how the how it's evolved and uh, and you know I mean it does, hasn't really changed much like when I watch uh, some of the, the CSGO tournaments today uh, like the skills that they're employing and, and the tactics that they're using is pretty much the same as what they were doing 10 years ago you know because uh, I think Valve have, has kept CSGO uh, the gameplay of CSGO pretty pretty uh, kind of like consistent in, in that they haven't really changed that 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 uh, feel of the game uh, over the over the over the past 20 years, I would say. So, and I think that is uh, that is one of the key to the uh, the longevity of CS:GO. It's a lot of the players that play today, a lot of the skills that they were they were they were training themselves for. They've been doing it for five years, and the, and because of that, the game hasn't changed, and they were able to carry their skills along with the game. But when you look at games like Call of Duty or Battlefield, they're always kind of introducing, like, uh, that's why, <clears throat> if you look at those games, the esports uh, can never really grow with those types of games because they keep reintroducing the gameplay every two or three years, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sort of like if they just kept adding new rules to, like, Yeah, yeah, football. and they do that in order to, you know, so they can sell the new version. And that's, so it's always kind of interesting to me when I see games, AAA game studios, like, uh, Battlefield try to become esports because uh, to me it just seems so 
opposite of what they are, are as, as, a, as a game publisher. Their, their mentality is to make a game every two years or every year. And you know, in order to do that, they have to change the game. But that, that mentality goes against esports. Esports, in order for esports to grow, it has to be consistent. The, the rule set has to be consistent. You know, it has to be like, you look at League of Legends, you know, it's, it hasn't, fundamentally the rules haven't changed that much over the course of its lifetime. And I think it's a, you, you hit on that philosophy where you make one game mm -hmm. and you take care of it over time and that's how you build an esports community. Yeah, Whereas, sure. That's what Valve has done with CS. Yeah, or look at Rocket League in recent history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're not making a Rocket League 2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that... They, that they, they allow the community to grow and, and, and that's exactly what Rainbow Six uh, Siege has done when I when I look at Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, Rainbow Six Siege is I don't know two or three years old, I guess. Yes. It's yeah. Three and it's kind of amazing because when it was first released, it, it didn't do so well, and uh, you know they were really consistent about it in that oh let's just keep supporting and supporting it. And I play it even today. I, I started playing Rainbow Six Siege like six months ago, and you know I can sort of see uh, how much effort has uh, has gone into keep making that game very. Uh, just consistent and, and like the feel of the game very, uh, you know, the rule set has been, hasn't changed too much over the course of three years. You know, yeah, one thing you, you kind of hinted at, or at least kind of mentioned uh, in this interview is just how many shooters there are mm -hmm. in, in the world now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Like the whole battle royale thing yeah. is kind of like. It feels like <coughs> as it's splintered, the pie has gotten bigger for everyone, but now there's more people after the pie. How do yeah, you yeah. how do you differentiate yourself? Well, it's interesting because you know, like there's only there's only so many FPS players. So every time a new uh, new game comes out, you know, obviously it, it's going to take a lot of players from that uh, from another game. Like whenever uh, when PUBG came out and started to become popular, you started to see less players of CS:GO. You know, because yeah. a lot some of them were kind of trickling over to to PUBG, right? But the you know it, it never really died. It never really died out. Like you still have a lot of CS:GO players, and you still. Have, but yeah, I mean, you, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a lot of uh, like the player base is just kind of like moving across each other. But I still think that there's still gonna be a uh, a lot of people that's still gonna play Battlefield. They're still gonna play Counter Strike, even though there is a new like battle royale game coming out. Like. You know, there, uh, there's just going to be maybe a bit less of them, maybe. And I think they're just going to, the players, they kind of just jump across, you know. Like. Well, I, th I think one reason why you see the player base so fickle now is yeah. that a lot of these Battle Royale games that are popular are free to play. Uh, yeah, yeah. PUBG wasn't, but, you know, when you have a $60 Call of Duty or a $60 Battlefield every year yeah, yeah. versus zero dollars to play for oh yeah it's just easy to just install it check it out and you know get addicted to it right yes yeah, yeah, so i feel sure. like the economics have changed a little bit so yeah how would yeah. do you do you think that that's do you think that game as a service free to play kind of model mm -hmm. uh do you think it has staying power or do you think it's something that only large companies can really afford to implement um i i think it's i think it really is uh, important for you know, I, I think it's a really big draw for, for games to be, be free to play it because there's such a low barrier of entry for players to just, you know, download and check it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why Fortnite and Apex has, 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 has helped it become so, so popular in, in such a short amount of time, mm -hmm. you, know? Uh, you know, because of their, their, their free to playness. So I do think free to play is a certain, certainly a huge factor mm -hmm. in, in making a, a game uh, growing uh, the player base uh, but is it is it necessary like does a game have to be free to play um, I, I don't know I mean like uh, if it's not free to play then you, you really have to spend a lot of money on marketing and and th that sort of thing and you have to get the right right price point because yeah nobody's gonna spend 60 bucks for a game and it doesn't offer a, 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 a like drastically different experience than like Apex Legends or whatever you get in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. See, because I think right now the FPS genre is so saturated that you've got so many different game experiences that for, for a developer to come out and, and charge like to ask 30, 40 bucks and, and your game isn't, isn't so drastically different than the existing games, uh, it's, it's, it's a really tough sell, you know. That, that's why I think uh, it's important to be a free-to-play game, you know, so, in, in uh, this, in this day and age.